Not only my viewers are interested in identification of insects. My wife don't watch my channel at all, but she has just brought me this and asks what it is. This is actually one of the most recognizable insects you can find in the house. This is a skin beetle larva. And you will agree, it doesn't look like anything else at all. It cannot be confused with any other arthropod that can live in your apartment. And if you once figure out that this is a baby skin beetle, then the next time you see it, you will recognize it or any of its relatives of other species. Here I turn it over with a toothpick and you can roughly estimate its size. And by the way, pay attention to its six legs. They are very small, but you can count them with the naked eye or on the video. And if you can count exactly six legs, you can also realize that this is at least an insect. Because when viewed uh, from above, the legs are barely visible and many people do not quite understand uh, what kind of creature this is. Viewers who sent me photos and videos with such larvae confused them with worms and caterpillars, centipedes and the others. But if you turn it on its back, everything falls into place. But the most characteristic distinguishing feature of skin beetle larvae is these hairs all over the body and especially at the back, forming such a peculiar tail. Even at this distance, these hairs are clearly visible. Larvae of most other beetle species do not have such fur. And in different species of skin beetles, the larvae are more or less hairy. In different species, they can be brown and gray and almost black and with a shorter body. But this combination of a worm-like body and long hair on it immediately allows you to identify skin beetle larvae. At least in houses and apartments, no other worm-like insects with dense hairs all over their bodies live. These larvae are serious pests. They spoil food, they can gnaw on floor, litter, woolen products, cotton products and any natural fabric. And yeah, they can damage coats, hats, sweaters and other clothes. And I wondered where they lived and what they ate at my house, in the bedroom. It turned out that the wife found this larva in this box in scraps of fabric. Now I will put this larva in a glass jar so that it cannot get out. And then I will carefully sort through this wall box. And if there are more larvae in it, then I will make a video to show you, my dear viewers, in what unexpected locations in the house you can find such insect pests. Here is another larva right on the candle. Here it has nothing to eat, because with all the omnivorousness, skin beetle larvae cannot eat wax. Most likely these are the larvae of the last age and they crawled away from their food source looking for secluded places for pupation. Here are the candles, there are some crumbs in the bottom candle, but no other baby dermestides. All species of skin beetles from the family Dermestide. This is a scientific name for this group of beetle species. Aha! Here is a larva in a matchbox among the matches. I'm gonna focus the camera on it. Still not very visible. This way it's better. Here it is. Very small, slightly larger than a match head and slightly larger than a garden ant. But that their maximum size. These larvae won't get any bigger. In this form they will pupate and then adult beetles 2 to 3 millimeters long will emerge from the pupae. Well, there are not any more among the matches. Maybe there is something else hiding in the empty match box. Yeah, there is a baby beetle sitting in the corner. How do I get it out of there? I cannot do it with my fingers. If I break the box, I can crush it. Now I'm gonna take a knife and try to hook it. Ah, that's all. 
I don't need it anymore. It crawled out the other side to the slit. Here it is, exactly the same. I'll put it into the container with the others. There is probably a wall brute of them. These are incense sticks. I'm not going to go through all of them because they crumble a lot. Even if some larva remains here, it will not be a problem. Aha! Uh -huh. Here are in fact a food source. These are rose hips. The kid collected them and made a piece of jewelry out of them for mom. Mom could not throw away the drift from the child, put it into a box, and on these berries another mother laid eggs and Larry hatched from them. Here you see, they are all gnawed. The pill on them is damaged. Everywhere you can see the holes through which the larvae crawled in and then got out. Here are the holes. Here too. Here is the damaged peel. And here is probably a bracelet of berries. And on such an unattractive and seemingly low nutrient food, a whole company of larvae grew up. Here is another larva in the box, probably from some real jewelry, rings or earrings. That's all. I think there are no any other larvae here. Here is plasticine ring, handmade jewelry, kid made jewelry, some stone, some other stuff, valerian essential oil. The dermestites aren't afraid of it, as you can see. And here is another larva right on the upholstery of the box. It doesn't seem very active. Maybe I press it down with something, I don't know. I will put it with the others and let it decide if it wants to move or keep freezing a bit more. Yeah, there is a bunch of rubbish here. Some coins, some toys. That's all. It seems there is no one else in the box. Some crumbs, but no Larry. And here are the very pieces of fabric on which my wife found that first larva. They were here with the rest of the rubbish. There is another immature dermocyte right on the fabric. Letting it go to the fun company in the container. In such a box you can also find some of these guys in your house. Don't be surprised and don't be scared. It's normal. 
They do not bite people and do not know the skin of living people and animals. At least no one has ever seen or recorded on video that such larvae bite people. Many people claim that skin beetles bite them, but in fact in such cases it turns out that either they are not bitten at all, but they develop an allergy with a rush to contact with these hairs, setae of the germicid larvae. Or sometimes people are bitten by bed bugs of fleas, and when they cannot find bed bugs of fleas at home, but find skin beetles, they blame them. If you have ever seen skin beetles biting people, please email me about it. We will look into it. Right now this larva is crawling on my palm and does not show any appetite for my skin at all. I am absolutely sure it won't bite me. And in general, no matter how many skin beetle larvae I've held in my hands, no one of them has ever bitten me. This apparently is a larva of a species from the genus Trogoderma, possibly the larva of a capra beetle. It is one of the world's most dangerous grain pests and is one of the unofficial list of the 100 worst invasive species in the world. Its larvae usually feed on dry plant foods. They can eat grain, they can feed on hay and silage, on any dried fruits and nuts, and they can also develop normally on dry rose hips, as we can see, because there are no other food sources here in the casket. They and some of their relatives greatly harm zoological and botanical collections, simply eating exhibits and leaving dust and feces instead. And the larvae of species of the Jews look just like that. Larvae of other skin beetle species may have different coloration, denser setae, but in general they look about the same. And those other species may have a different food specialization. For example, in some species larvae are typical scavengers and feed on rotten or even dried skin and tissues on the skeleton of dead animals. They, by the way, are used in some museums for delicate and safe cleaning of bones from meat and skin. There, in a separate room or container, thousands of larvae nibble wall skeletons, leaving only clean bones. In other species, the larvae live near spiders' nests and feed on the remains of insects' bodies from which the spider has sucked out all the insides. And in birds' nests, such larvae eat the remains of insects. There is even a species in which the larvae eat mantis otiki. And in apartments they can eat cereals, nuts, dried fruits, can damage linen or leather clothes, fur coats and hats. Everything made of natural materials is to their teeth and taste. And here, by the way, is the chitinous shell, which such a larva sheds several times as it grows. They are usually found more often than the larvae themselves, because they are immobile and do not crawl away and hide. If you find such exoskeletons in your place from time to time, you can be sure that somewhere in a dark box, or somewhere in a closet, in a fur coat pocket, baby skin beetles are sitting and slowly spoiling something. So I gathered all these guys in a glass jar, threw them their native dry rose hips to make them calm, but somehow they are not very calm. Most likely they are really already in the last larval stage and are actively looking for places for quiet pupation. And here, in the absence of other places, they will pupate inside or among the gnawed rose hips. And when adult beetles emerge from this pupae, I will try to determine these species and show them to you. And if you meet at home some insect that you cannot identify, take pictures of them or shoot them on video and send them to my email. We'll look at them together and figure out who is wound up at your home. Take care of yourself and see you soon.